G'day again Blender Heads and welcome to the Creature Kit Bash Quick Start Guide and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add your own assets to the library. Now because this uses the Blender Asset Manager this is really quite easy to do. So I'm going to show you how to add this Gremlin sculpt that I did a little while back and just in case any of you are wondering if you do a quick search for Gremlin yes this model does actually come as part of the pack. Uh, so it's currently in the library at the moment. Let's just quickly delete it so I can show you how to re-add it. So let's go Edit, Preferences, go down to your File Paths, and if you scroll down, you should see the CKTB Assets. Click on that, and it will take you to the Base Mesh folder. Now, unfortunately, I can't actually delete things directly from here, so I'm just going to copy that URL and open it up in a file browser. And from here, I can actually delete some assets. So let's do a quick search for Gremlin. Uh, I'm actually going to delete both the Gremlin arm and the Gremlin base mesh because there's some additional stuff that I want to show you with limbs, arms and legs and stuff. So let's delete all of those. Get that out of the way now. We can close that. Close that. And if I just quickly refresh this and do a search for Gremlin, you can see that now we're missing that base mesh and his arm. So let's look at adding both of those back in. So in terms of your object structure over here, it's fairly simple. I've got the actual base mesh, and underneath that I have all of his various bits, like his eyes, some extra claws, uh, he's actually got some teeth and gums and stuff underneath here, and a tongue. So all of those, parent them underneath the, uh, underneath the body here. In fact, let's just show you how to do it. This is currently separate, you can click and drag on it. If you hold down shift, it will parent it underneath the gremlin body, or in the viewport you can select the eye, select the base mesh and go control P and just go object. And that's also now parented. That's just so that it's easier. You only have one thing to grab and it will move everything else around. In terms of making this an actual asset so that the library can see it, you need to put it underneath its own collection and then mark the actual collection as an asset. So we go mark as asset. You can see that you get this kind of little bookmark symbol and that's now ready. So all we should need to do is go save as, go back to our actual folder here, call it the Gremlin Base Mesh, and go save as. And you can see now it's immediately added it back in. So that's kind of cool. You can also just go back to the current file here. You can see that this is the actual thumbnail that will be uh, being used. You can refresh that. You can uh, put him in different poses or whatever and uh, render the active object if you want to tweak your thumbnail. But this one's actually kind of worked, so I'm just going to run with it. All right, so that's added back in base mesh. Doing the whole base mesh is fairly simple. Um, let's quickly show you how to do things like adding back in the arm. Now, as you can see here, I, I've gone and ripped his arm off. Uh, I've filled in that gap that uh, tearing the arm off does. Make sure that your meshes are all watertight. I've also gone and put this back at the origin point, so at 0, 0, 0, and everything has been zeroed out, so I've applied all of the transformations. I've also gone in and made sure that his pivot point is at the origin. Uh, it doesn't need to strictly be at the origin, but you want it on that ball joint, so that if I go and grab the rotate here, you can see that he's actually rotating from his shoulder. Um, and that just makes it easier to place objects once you are trying to, to kit bash them. So if I just go right click down here on its fingertip and go and let's set the origin to the 3D cursor, you can imagine that if I was trying to put his arm into a shoulder or wherever you want to put his arms, try to rotate it from the finger joint is a really bad place to try and rotate it from. So try and set pivot points on all joints. It just makes it a little bit easier once we uh, once we get to the actual kit bashing. As you can see, I've already marked this one as an asset. Uh, the claws and everything are underneath the main object. So once again, all we need to do is go save as. Make sure that we're saving it to the right place. Gremlin arm, go save. And let me just go back to our original scene here. If I just click refresh over here, you will see that we now have the arm and we can start pulling these bits and pieces in. Sorry, need to go add part. And now you can see we can give him some extra arms if for some reason that was a thing you felt you needed to do. One last thing, these assets will bring in any modifiers that, uh, that you assign to them. So because the asset manager has its own use mirror function here, 
Um, don't feel like on the original assets that you need to be adding mirror modifiers or anything like that. Um, try and clear out your modifier stack. Technically speaking, I let's just say I could add a subdivision surface here. And um, look, let's just save this. Go back to the original scene. I might just delete those arms. If I go and refresh this now and uh, bring this part in, you can see that it does come in with the uh, with the subdivision modifier. So you can, in theory, add any extra modifiers that you want to these objects to bring them in as part of the kit bash. I would generally recommend trying to apply all of your modifiers just simply because the more you add to this, the more bloat it gives things, larger file sizes, more dense meshes, uh, and it can make bullying things later a little bit more difficult. So just try and keep it as clean as possible, just as a general rule.